it's been a very long time since we've played with high voltage, and because of the fact that it is close to midnight, I think it's a perfect time to do so. So, guys, I'm sorry for the lack of videos. I recently have been constructing a unit over the past month. That's probably why I have been gone from YouTube. So, I'll show you guys what this unit is in good detail, and I'm pretty sure you guys will like this one. So, let's get right into it. First of all, I'd like to point out that I finally got a fire extinguisher in this garage. What a brilliant idea. Oh, and before we do get into the build, this unit will allow me to select whatever power level I want between 0 and 10,000 watts. So, I'll leave it right there guys. Let's get into the build, and I'll show you this thing in greater detail afterwards. So, let's do it. Look at all that fun in there. Now I have to tidy it up with some zip tie. Okay, so here we are at the back of the unit where it acquires two different plugs. One plug powers the uh, switching and the lighting. This just goes into a normal 120 volt receptacle. And this plug can plug into a 120 or 240 volt plug socket and that's where you get your power from that you want to current limit. This power goes into the breaker panel. The switching and the lighting is protected by this 15 amp. The auxiliary or the external ballast is protected by this 30 amp which the auxiliary ballast plugs into that. And the bypass and 3 kilowatts worth of ballasting uh, is protected by this double pole 40 amp breaker. And of course, our output would be this plug socket just here. That's the back of the unit. Okay, so here we are at the front of the unit, where it acquires an AC volt and an AC amp meter, emergency stop button, key switch, and an energized selector switch. These buttons down here control the contactors, internal cooling fan, and of course, you've got your power buttons just here. All labeled as follows. And this of course is your output switches. Okay, so our auxiliary power supply will be these two transformer stacks that will current limit our setup to 4,000 watts on the auxiliary selection. So let's plug those in. Breakers are on. And we've got our power block plugged in there. Now we're just going to plug in our potential transformer because we haven't used it in a while. So let's power that thing up and test it with the potential transformer. And now that we're ready, let's turn it on. Contactor energized. That will allow us to operate the contactors in the device. Internal cooling fan. And we've got our power buttons. Now you see this 30 watt one here. This 30 watt one will allow us to have 30 watts, but when we kick in the 700 watt one, we will get 750 watts or so, depending on the voltage, because these two buttons control different parts of, a, of two different ballasts. This button has the ballasts in series. This button shorts out their coils and that gives us the 750 watts that we want. It's kind of a weird feature, but it works. And if I wanted high voltage at 30 watts, then that would be good for me. So we're going to start out at 250 watts. Okay guys, so for our test subject, we've got a potential transformer over here, rated at 1500 VA, 7200 volts at output with a 120 volts input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold out the arc, and as we crank it up, we'll see uh, the arc get fatter, so let's go ahead and turn the output live. So it's 250 watts we're going to start out with. 
We're going to add that extra 30 watts. That's not going to do much, obviously. That's close to 300 watts. But that 30 watts will allow us to activate the 700 watt portion of the ballast. So there we got an extra 700 watts. That's about a kilowatt worth of energy. Now I'm going to take off that 700. Give it 400. So there's about 700 watts there. Extra 300 watts. There's about a kilowatt. And there's an extra 1100 watts. It's about two and a half kilowatts. An extra 700 watts. And there we have our 3000 watts. Now we're going to give it the four kilowatts that we have in the external ballast. Decent. What about bypass? Let's bypass it all. That's quite a bit. That amp meter was a bit pegged there. So there we have the test and uh, I guess that showed you how this power supply works in general. So that's our high voltage test. Let's try something else. All right so now we get a, a bucket of some water. A little bit salted. We got it completely bypassed. Let's turn it on. Ooh. We're up to about six kilowatts. Whew. Bring that up to a boil quite quick. We can even boil water. Oh no. Uh oh, amps are falling off. Holy crap! <laughs> Coming up. Three thousand watts. It can even current limit water. Ooh. How about bypass? Okay guys, so our last test will be on this transformer and Jacob's ladder setup. So, let's energize it. Three kilowatts. Now we're going to bypass briefly. I'm sure you guys want to see the inside of this unit. This area is where the ballasts are held, or the current limiting. Just got two transformers bound in series there to give me 1100 watts. And with all these ballasts in here, I got a total power capacity of just around 3 kilowatts. Then we've got our cooling fan and our terminal block. And then up here, this is where all the switching is done. 
kind of see it's a bit of a nightmare, not the best wiring in the world. But there we've got a 12 volt DC power supply to run the lights. We've got our contactors. And of course, our main input and output contactor, along with the uh, current transformer over there for the amp meter. And all the wires for the switches there on the top of the panel. So that's pretty much all there is that is inside of this unit. It's nothing too complicated. So I'm pretty happy how this turned out. It was a nightmare to make it, but in the end, it was well worth it. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll certainly have some videos in the future, I promise. So guys, I'll see you on the next video very shortly. Thanks for watching.